My wife is very fond of telling me that I am a bean counter, and in this video I'm going to prove her right by correcting the otherwise excellently researched channel Today I Found Out. Specifically, I'm going to be talking about the one in which host Simon Whistler talks about the iconic German spiked helmet. The first issue I have with it is his pronunciation of the German word for the helmet, which he utters at least 30 times, each time incorrectly. Pickle hall, 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 pickle hall. Now I understand it's not always easy to get it right, and I should know because I once famously mispronounced Tucson on this very channel. But Simon has a team of researchers and writers working for him, which I don't, so it's rather surprising that nobody checked. It's pronounced Pickelhauber with four, that's four syllables. Pickelhauber. But it's not just the pronunciation that activated my bean counting powers. In fact, it was something that Mr. Whistler didn't say that caught my attention, which is that Pickelhaube was never the official term for this piece of headgear. It seems that Pickelhaube was just a colloquial word for it. Officially, it was usually just called Helm mit Spitze, helmet with spike. Much more descriptive, so where does Pickelhaube come from? The team at Today I Found Out didn't do a lot of research on this point because they had Simon explain to us that the term derives from the words for pickaxe and bonnet. Except that that's just not true. I mean, yes, if you take a modern dictionary, those are the translations that you'll find, but that's not the derivation of the word. In the Middle Ages, Halber meant a piece of headgear that completely surrounded the head. And in the dictionary compiled by the famous Brothers Grimm, just a few years before the spiked helmet as we know it was officially introduced to Germany, the word Pickelhalber was traced back to Beckenhalber. Becken has many different meanings, but in this case it means bowl. So Beckenhaube was a bowl-shaped helmet that covered and protected the entire head. Over time, as these things often do, the pronunciation changed and the meaning also shifted. The N evolved into an L and eventually we got the modern Pickelhaube. That was the word whether or not it had a spike, and the Grimms explained that in their day Pickelhaube meant a leather military helmet. They did say that it was sometimes taken to mean a spiked helmet, apparently by association with a pickaxe, but they also said that this idea is quite simply wrong. Another pronunciation issue this video has is with the name of the poet Heinrich Heine. But then Heine himself was used to people mispronouncing his name. When he moved to France, he complained that the locals translated his first name into the French Henri and then couldn't pronounce his surname, and so they called him Monsieur Henri N, or sometimes even Monsieur Un Rien, which means Mr. A Nothing. The reason Heine is mentioned at all is that that he sarcastically wrote about the Pickelhaube, but the video fails to explain why he wrote about it. Actually, no, that's a bit harsh. It's not a failing of the video because it was actually completely irrelevant to the main point. But allow me to fill you in anyway. Heine was born a Jew, but this meant that it would be difficult for him to pursue his chosen career in law. So, being indifferent to religion just generally, he had himself baptised as a Christian and was disappointed to discover that this actually didn't make much difference. And also, his poetry was being censored. So, in 1831, he emigrated to France, where he met a rather more tolerant society. Later, in the winter of 1843-44, he went to Germany for a few weeks to visit his family, and he kept a journal which eventually developed into a, a long piece of satire in the form of a kind of humorous travelogue in rhyme. It was in Aachen that he encountered Prussian soldiers, and in his poem he mocked the way they walked, their moustaches, and of course their helmets. He made fun of lots of other things as well, and towards the end of his poem compared the future of Germany to a stinking chamber pot. 
Unsurprisingly, his book was banned in Prussia, and a few decades later, a certain political movement branded Heinrich Heine a traitor to the fatherland. Nowadays, of course, he's regarded as one of the most important and influential German writers. And of course, we'll never forget how he thought that the famed Prussian spiked helmet, the pride of the Prussian army, looked more like a lightning conductor. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, you might enjoy the video that I've linked to down below. Or you might not, but you won't know if you don't watch it.